Hello, welcome to this guest lecture around using technology in coaching. My name is Jack Walton. Uh, I work for the FA as a regional coach development manager for the Northwest uh, in the technical directorate um, and I sit within grassroots coach development. Um, look after a team of full-time coach developers across the Northwest and our, and our job is to um, inspire, empower and support coaches to develop creative players. Um, initially this content was put together for a coaches conference uh, in Cheshire um, and I was asked to come and present uh, the content for Staffordshire University um, for the, the students. So although a lot of the content might be biased towards football, I think there's probably a, uh, a relevance um, which should transcend across across all sports. Um, so first football reference there is, uh, I don't know if, the, if it's definitely him, but it certainly does look like Alf Ramsey, possibly in 1965 before the, uh, the World Cup came to England. Um, I'm not sure it is actually, but it, it certainly made me chuckle. And as you saw from the video there, technology certainly isn't perfect. Um, and what I'm going to do is explore some of the things that I've used and discarded and what I currently use um, in my own coaching practice. I currently work with a grassroots team, uh, under 13s, I've had them since they are under 10s. They're an absolute joy to work with. Um, I see them for around about an hour to an hour and a half a week for coaching and then we have weekly fixtures as well. So I'm very much um, trying to practice what I'm preaching uh, when I'm talking about this stuff here. So despite the uncanny resemblance, this isn't me. I've somehow acquired um, a, a nickname as a, a bit of an IT geek within coaching, within the FA and, and the football world. The reality is I actually use very little. Um, I've tested quite a lot. I've played around with things um, and I've discarded most I've tried to boil uh, my use of technology down to the bare minimum and like I said I'm going to explain how I've done that and um, the process I've gone through throughout this guest lecture. There's a great quote that I came across um, it was uh, about a couple of years ago now I did a presentation skills workshop uh, with a lady who used to work for the BBC and one of the things she said was never work with children, animals or, or technology and when you work with grassroots children that you know you could definitely um, make the assumption or the conclusion that they are animals so you could say I work with all three now but the reality is that yes technology is fantastic and it's moving along at such an incredible pace but really if you can't teach without it then we shouldn't really be teaching with it and all I'm going to look at is how do we actually use technology to to enhance um, and definitely not replicate. So my job across this guest lecture is really to try and inspire you to think about ways that you might be able to use technology in your own coaching and your own practice and hopefully give you some things that you can actually take away and, and do um, once you finish watching this this guest lecture. So first of all, what, what is technology? So ripped straight from Google, if we look at the, the, uh, the definition there, it's the collection of techniques, skills, methods and processes used in the production of goods or services or in the accomplishment of objectives such as scientific investigation. 
So as I mentioned, that I'm trying to explore how do we use technology to support coaching, not replace. Um, the image there of the whistle, well, we might look at that and, and frown now, but at one point that was cutting edge technology. And technology is moving on and evolving at such a, an incredible rate. Sometimes I think we can be guilty of forgetting what, what's, what we've actually got at our disposal that could be very useful. Um, as far as technology goes. So where it says scientific investigation there in, in the definition, the way I look at that is around testing assumptions. So I've tried to test assumptions in my own coaching. What assumptions are they? Well, probably my beliefs, my behaviours and any potential bias that I have. If you're interested in these things, I suggest you look up list of cognitive biases, just pop that into Google um, and you'll be quite astounded or um, it, it's impressive at just how many biases that, that we're subject to as human beings. Um, and really it boils down to the, the quote at the bottom there that what I'm trying to do in my own coaching is, um, is to try and work towards simplicity. So if I've got a, a set of principles that I can work towards, it's going to make my decision making as a coach a, a much more easy process. Um, and I remember when I first started coaching, I would literally buy books. Um, the internet was only just around then. I'm, I'm ashamed to say I would buy books off the internet or from bookstores and I would flick through the pages. And if the number in the practice or drill that I looked at in the book didn't match the number of players that I had um, come into my own sessions, I would just immediately discard it. And for some reason I thought that this was coaching. Uh, it was only when I broke free of this and started to work on principle-based coaching that things began to take off, shall I say. And I can even remember times when I would get 12 players arrive at training and I would be begging that no one else turned up um, because 13 was a prime number, whereas 12 you can divide by two, three, four, sixes. So it was very neat and tidy for repetitive drills. Um, and that's something that I've tried to, to break away from now. So what was the first assumption that I wanted to test? I'm going to go through three that I've looked at and used technology to help me with in my own coaching. So my first assumption was that I was a coach who gave equal opportunity and equal playing time to all of the players in my, in my care. Um, so I decided to try and use technology to, to test this. So our squad of players, as you can see on the screen there down the left hand side, I wanted to know um, what month they were born in, what quarter of the year they were born in and did this start, start to influence some of the decisions that I was making. So over a season, I started to track or I wanted to track the number of minutes that the, the players um, were playing. And a couple of quotes that I want to point you to there. One, the first thing is that what gets measured gets managed. So I wanted to measure the number of minutes so that I could test my own assumptions about were the, were the players getting equal playing time and I could appropriately manage it. But on the flip side of that, I think the quote there from William Bruce Cameron is really important that not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted. So it's important to recognise, okay, what's the sort of objective things that we can use technology to look at and is it really important? I felt that measuring playing time was, was really important for me and the opportunity that, that the players in my care were getting or not. So it was basically just a simple spreadsheet and I would start to track the number of, of minutes that players would play each game. Um, a very simple conditioning formatting rule would state that those with the lowest amount of playing time would be in the red and those with the highest amount of playing time would be in the green. So just using Microsoft Excel to build up this database over time. So I started tracking this um, to give me some ideas. What I found out was that I, I had no idea what equal was. It was just trying to, I was just guesswork each week. It was very reactive. Um, I also started to look at, as you can see there, what was the opportunity breakdown 
between positions because if there's one thing that uh, research tells us is that that the later that the players can specialise in in many cases the better. So I didn't want to pigeonhole these kids into positions. I wanted them to or I wanted to know that if I was I giving the players equal opportunity, just not not in terms of time on the pitch, but in terms of their their time it playing in different positions around the pitch. So one of the solutions that I tried to use technology for was an app. And I, I looked through the internet and because of my world is grassroots, I'm always looking for uh, value. So certainly things that are free or things that we've already got. And I came across an app called Team Timer. Um, you might want to check it out, free app. And this was a very simple tap on, tap off. So when the players were on the pitch, um, the clock would be running and it would just keep a rolling clock uh, for each of the players until I tap them, tap them off. Fantastic. Um, it actually works really well, but what I found was that I was spending more time doing this than actually observing the players playing, which doesn't help me in the, in the slightest as a coach. I want to be able to see what's going on. So in theory, it, it could have worked well for me. It might work well for you in, in, in your sport if that's different. But what I found was that the technology was actually take, was becoming more of a hindrance than a help. So uh, what it was doing what I wanted it to do in principle, but it was taking my eyes off the thing that really mattered, which was the pitch. So how did I get around that? Well, I looked at what if, what if I knew the amount of playing time that I was going to give to each player before kickoff? Um, and in the world of grassroots that I'm involved in, sometimes you don't know how many players you're going to have turning up to a match until a few minutes before kickoff. Um, some are playing in other sports, some play for their school team and so on and so forth. So I wanted a really quick formula that I could plug into my phone and have instantly, no, before kickoff, right, every player is going to get X amount of minutes. So I came up with with this, and this is my little formula for equal playing time. So now before kickoff every game, um, I can work out what playing time each of the players is gonna get. Sim simply, I've found since, which I probably didn't need to go through the process of developing a formula. Actually, if you just go to playingtimecalculator.com, whatever sport it is, that it, certainly with team games, you can very quickly work out the playing time um, or the equal playing time. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is they're all paying the same amount of subs. I want to make sure that they all get the same amount of time on the pitch. Um, I've since developed that where now it's not a case of equal playing time. We've flipped it on its head and the boys that I coach, they know that it's now equal bench time. So every player might spend, for example, six minutes on the bench and there's absolutely no quarrels about who starts, who finishes, uh, who comes on, who comes off. They all know before the whistle goes, they're all going to spend the same amount of time on the bench. Very simple. It's kind of taken the decision out of my hands and freed me up to observe and help the players. How did I use this then? Well, it was something that I already had on my phone. So everyone's got a stopwatch or a timer on their phone. All I, all I do now is work out the playing time, get my phone out, um, set the timer, the countdown timer, and give that to one of the subs. So I don't even have to worry about it now. The subs will look after the phone. They'll, they will certainly come over and tell you when it's a minute before they're going on. And it removes the decision from me. Um, I've basically outsourced it to the players. Uh, it means I can concentrate on observing the game. The players will tell me when it's their turn to go on. It's done. So that, that's one way that's uh, technologies really help to ensure that I get that equal playing time um, and I've also given the players a little bit of ownership and responsibility at the same time. So the second assumption was um, starting to break down our, our players and our team's performances into things that we could potentially measure uh, and look at as a way of um, being less subjective about whether we played well or not. So I hear the, the phrase, oh, we, we played well, we were just unlucky, um, an awful lot. And I wanted to 
to start to be a little bit more objective about well how, how did we play and you know the, the use of statistics and data is is becoming quite massive in uh, in football now but I don't want to go and spend thousands of pounds on code breaker or, or other software that frankly doesn't really um, wouldn't really work for me in, in grassroots at the moment um, so what I did was I bought a clicker a tally clicker um, and uh, one of the things I wanted to measure was we asked the players in our in our team what sort of team do we want to play like and we let them think about it and come back to us and unanimously they said they wanted to be a uh, they wanted to be a team who keep the ball um, who look after the ball and who don't give it away very much so over a number of games we started to tally up the number of times that um, we lost possession and then starting to flip it on its head well if we want to be a team that keeps possession and, and uses the ball well let's start to see how many times that we we string a run of three passes or more together so we would use that as a um, a performance based goal rather than just the scoreline at the end of the match being that that outcome based goal and over a number of weeks we've got the players involved the subs would be involved in in tallying this down and we would start to use this data to provide feedback to the players or have them provide feedback to themselves on whether we played well or not as a team the number on the screen there is actually from a, a game uh, a summer league game and I was interested in knowing how many times possession changed during the, during the match so it was a 50 minute match and possession changed changed hands between the teams 258 times roughly once every six seconds so if there was ever a um, an argument that we should be including transition in our practices that's certainly one to be made there what I found was that I would sometimes forget the tally clicker I would leave it in the car um, and this would cause me a bit of a headache until I went on the App Store free tally counter app so I just keep that on my, on my phone now does exactly the same job again I can give it to the players they can record some of the things that we might be looking at and it's because it's on my phone I know I'm never going to forget it it's always in my pocket free um, does just as good a job so the third assumption that I wanted to test in my own coaching was um, was that maybe the difference between what I thought I saw and what was actually going on um, because there's we're taking in masses and masses of information at any one time uh, and we have a we're often subject to a thing called inattentional blindness um, suggest you check out uh, a guy called Daniel Simons and his work uh, around if you just type in invisible gorilla into YouTube or into Google um, highly recommend you have a look at some of his work very interesting on on what we think we see as opposed to what actually happens so I wanted to start testing in my own coaching um, what was actually happening in uh, in my practices so I know that the camera doesn't lie and the microphone certainly doesn't um, and I wanted to start to record and capture footage from my own coaching and for coaches that I work with um, again I didn't want to spend money on expensive equipment I wanted a way of being able to do this with equipment that we've probably all got or, or minimal cost so one of the things that I did was um, I'm ashamed to admit that that pink camera is mine and I did buy it on a uh, on way, the way to a stag do I think back in about 2007 at the time it was cutting edge it's not so much anymore I'm sure you might have um, old digital cameras lying around anyway what's important about that though is that it has a, uh, a memory card um, that can give me a significant amount of footage time so most coaches will deliver maybe an hour an hour and a half at a time um, if you start to try and record an hour of footage on your smartphone or on your tablet that's going to run down very quickly and it's going to take up a lot of the storage on on that device they weren't designed specifically for that whereas the digital camera is so that was my um, my video footage sorted at no extra cost um, what I did was go online and, and buy a, a tripod it cost me about six pounds 
Um, I could put that at the side of the pitch. Tripods have a universal clip on them, so that camera fitted straight onto it. Um, and then I wanted a way of being able to record the audio. Um, so microphones can get quite expensive. You're looking at five, six hundred pounds for a radio mic, or you could use the voice recorder notes um, app, which is probably already on your smartphone. You might never even used it before, um, but most smartphones nowadays have a, a voice, voice notes recorder. How do we record the audio? Well, we've already got a microphone at our disposal, which is the uh, the headphones. Many of you have got an iPhone will know this. You've got the um, the microphone there, and then just with the simple bit of technology called the bulldog clip, I could then clip it onto my uh, my jacket and go out and coach. Um, I've since started to evolve from that and I'm just about to um, try something new out. So I spent six pounds on Amazon um, last week to buy a wireless, a specific wireless microphone that fits into a, uh, a smartphone. I've been using this um, for a few sessions now, but what I've found is that the, the sound quality is nowhere near as good as um, even that off the, the Apple headphones. So my next bit of experimentation, which I'm going to try and do, is I saw a video on YouTube uh, just only a few days ago, which is how do you take that those Apple headphones and turn them more into a, uh, a more professional looking microphone, if you could put it that way. Um, and one of the ways that I'm going to do that is by simply snipping off the cable here um, ab above the microphone so I'm actually getting rid of the earpiece. Uh, I don't need the other side either so at the bottom I'm going to snip off the other headphone. I don't need that. And then all I'm going to do is get an old tie clip and use some classic tape and just wrap it around and then I've got a clip and the microphone which I can just stick straight onto my uh, jacket. So those of you who might have a go with this, you, you might find this, this very handy. Um, so we, we worked on a way of marrying up the, the video footage and the audio so that we could be filming a coach or I could film myself from 50 yards away. Um, I might be having a little one-to-one -one conversation with the player um, and then I can marry the video and the, the audio up together. And here's what that looks like in, in practice. Okay, so you probably get the idea there. So that was a colleague of mine, Darren. Um, we were using this to, to film each other's sessions and to start using that as a, ref a tool to reflect back on. So again, trying to join the dots between what we thought happened and what actually happened. Um, in all the sort of technology that I've been playing around with and experimenting with, this has probably been the most powerful uh, thing that we've, we've used yet. Um, and that was filmed using no more than what I just showed you in the previous slide, an old digital camera, um, some Apple uh, headphones just clipped to a jacket, recorded on a, um, a voice notes app. If you're interested in 
learning a bit more about the process of how you marry that data up together and how you edit it, um, I'll give you a link to a YouTube video that I've put out there that, that is a step-by-step -step guide of, of putting that through. Um, so that was, that was really helpful in, a, in our coaching in our, and certainly in our coach development of using that simple technology, but there was still a, another itch to scratch. So what I wanted to do was have a really simple way of um, looking at how much time the players were, were able to spend playing in practice. And one of the, I, I got this idea from looking at some, uh, some of our editors in the studio. Uh, they would be watching a video and ed editing a video and it would just have a, a time code in the corner and that, that time code would just keep rolling on and rolling on. I, it, I suddenly came to me, what, what if we were able to embed that into a, a video that we'd taken with our, with our headphone mics as a way of testing the assumption of I, I give my players X amount of playing time. So this is a video of a, of a colleague of mine recently delivering a, um, a practice with some coaches on a course. And you'll notice in the bottom left corner there, there's a rolling ticket that just carries on. Have a go at run bout as a game for a few minutes. Hurry boots. Oh, lovely touch, lovely touch. So there you see in the bottom corner, that time code just keeps rolling, regardless. And we can use that timer to start to accurately measure how much time the players are active during the practices, um, how much time the coach takes in his or her interventions, um, we can start to break that down into how much time in various coaching styles does the, um, does the coach use. Um, um, and a really important one is how much time is, is lost within that hour a week that the coach might have in what we'd call transition. So it might be time between practices where the coach perhaps hasn't planned thoroughly enough, is picking up and putting down cones, um, and, it, and it's all creeps up to lost time but um, that, that can be avoided if we start to think and plan ahead. So an example was a coach that I filmed uh, last season who in, in an hour's session had 18 minutes of transition time. So that was time where the players weren't active, um, they weren't necessarily engaged in any sort of learning. Um, it was just time where the coach was setting up the next drill or practice or game um, that really could have been avoided and, and has since been avoided since that coach uh, watched the practice back and just saw how significant this amount of time was that was being lost um, transitioning between practices. So there's an example of a, a, a session that I delivered with my own group of players. So you can see just under an hour and a half that we had. Um, we, the, the time that the players were playing was just over 50 minutes, so 51 minutes, 51 seconds. So in that session, my ball rolling time, if you like, was 59%. I spent 18 minutes, nearly 19 minutes, managing the session, whether that be um, laying out rules and conditions for practice, reviewing, um, whatever that might be, that, that's how long I spent. And then my interventions across the hour and a half, so the amount of times that I was actually going in and coaching, if you like, and stopping the play, was uh, in that particular session was 17 minutes. Um, and then what we used was the video footage to start breaking down, right, how many times did I stop the group? Well, in this session it was 17. How long did I actually spend intervening? On average, it was a minute. What, what were my coaching styles, so the type of interventions I was using. Okay, well as you can see there, there was some observation and feedback, some questions, some command style. Um, and this was 
just to start to use technology to form a more objective view about what was actually happening in, in the sessions. And we're trying to encourage coaches to, to do this on a more regular basis. One of the things that, that we did as well was a, a couple of seasons ago, I, I mentioned before about outsourcing. So we, um, a, a more simple way of doing it was in grassroots, most parents um, stay around to watch their kids. So we were working with a group of under sevens a couple of seasons ago and we wanted as a, as a group of three coaches with 21 kids, we wanted to um, look at how long the kids were active for in the hour because we, we were very tight on time. So we would simply give one of the parents a stopwatch every week and we did this for about eight weeks. Um, we said to the dad, okay, all we want you to do is when your son is active and playing, the timer should be rolling. If your son's not active, move, moving between sessions has been stopped by the coach, stop the watch. And what we found was that week one, his son was active for 50% of the, uh, of the session, of the hour. So we really worked hard to try and cut our transition time down, cut our coaching and intervention time down, or be more efficient with it. And by the end of eight weeks, we've got that 50% moved up to 75%. So in an hour session, that's an, an extra 15 minutes of playing time that we're able to claw back. If you add that up over a season, that's, that's significant numbers. So that's just a you know, really simple way that we use technology in our, in our coaching, something as simple as a stopwatch to try and um, improve our own coaching practice. So as I mentioned before, I've, I've tried loads of things. I've probably got rid of more stuff than, than I certainly use at the moment. And I'm trying to get to a point where, as, uh, as the quote says there, perfection is achieved not when you can't add any more, but actually when you, when you can boil it down and, and you can't take anything more away. And I think that, that's where I'm trying to get to in my own coaching. And that's significant because, you know, you go on the App Store now and 1.6 um, million apps out there there's so much stuff there's so much noise it's how do you cut through that to get to um, what's important to you so I mentioned at the start that I wanted to use technology to test my own assumptions and to start to work on a, a more principled basis of, of coaching and I'm continuing to do that and refine the process so where am I now well most of the time I'm stuck in traffic, certainly on the M6 with the roadworks. Um, I like to use, um, as I mentioned, coaching to, to, to challenge myself, to challenge my beliefs, to open my mind a little bit more. Um, podcasts are something that I'm uh, a, a massive advocate at the moment now just because there's so much free uh, information out there. I probably listen to two to three hours a day um, just while I'm sat in the car. Um, and, and it's on my terms, so I listen to exactly what I want to listen to. I can skip through. I don't have to listen to adverts anymore. Um, so this is how I'm currently using technology to, to try and expand my own horizons and improve my own coaching. Um, and as I've mentioned before, with the amount of apps, there's so much out there. Um, we're really drowning in it. But if we, you know, but at the same time, we're trying to really um, thirst for that understanding. So what about the future? Well, there's a, a lot of talk, and, and this is the present, around um, wearable technology and, and quantified self, uh, looking at artificial intelligence. So um, as, as you can see in the picture now, the present day, you've got drones that, that can follow you and, and film your, your footage. That, that's, I don't think it'll be too far or too long before we see one of those on a... Um, in, a, in a, on a coaching field somewhere. I, I currently wear a Fitbit. I have done for about 18 months. So I've tried to quantify a number of different metrics in my own life. Um, that was actually a, uh, a game of six aside I played with some mates um, only a few days ago. So I'm, I'm starting to look objectively about, you know, did I work hard enough tonight? That was my time in there. Uh, 
in my heart rate. So this, this actually isn't necessarily the future. It's, it, this stuff is out there and, and is present today. Um, so I guess the question to you is, where do you need the technology to help you? Um, if you break the, the kind of strategy down into three, so it, is it for planning, is it actually for delivering, or is it reviewing? Um, and I, I hope that I've given you some ideas um, from the three assumptions that I spoke about that you can maybe test um, in either or multiple areas that would relate to you. So thanks for your attention. I hope you've um, had some ideas. I hope it's uh, maybe inspired you to try out some technology in your own coaching. Um, if you've got any questions whatsoever or any comments, I'd love to, uh, to hear from them. There's a few ways that you can get in touch. I'm putting a lot of things out on, um, on YouTube at the moment just for coaches to ideas and practices and um, things for coaches to pick up and, and try and share. Um, there's so much information that's so freely available now. It's, uh, it'd be a shame not to, to use it. So um, I look forward to, um, to hearing from you and any feedback or questions that you've got. Thanks very much.